On December 13, 2006, the United Nations General Assembly adopted the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities with an Article 24 on Education. The right to education is central to ensuring all other human rights. Today, there are over 650 million persons with disabilities in the world. Over 72 million children are out of school. Estimates indicate that 30 to 40 percent of them are children with disabilities. Most of them live in developing countries. This poses a significant development challenge for us all. Ensuring education for all will impact on our social and economic situation worldwide. We must work together to build a world for inclusion. In 1948, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights stated that everyone has a right to education. Yet today, there are too many children who are deprived of this fundamental human right. Education is empowerment and the key to building peaceful societies, and we need to work together to ensure education for all. UNESCO is helping us get into school by working with governments to build inclusive systems so that no one is left without education. The United Nations has been working hard to help all children so that their rights become a reality. order of work for this session, which I hoped would assist colleagues. The Disability Convention will support this important goal of education for all. Distinguished colleagues, um, it's my pleasure to declare open the eighth session of the Ad Hoc Committee. What the Convention is trying to do is to set out uh, very specifically the obligations on governments to provide children with disabilities and adults with disabilities with the same learning opportunities and quality of education that other people in the community get. Inclusive education it's not only a right for people, but it's a right for society. I learned to dance the margarina. I learned how to bowl. I learned, I got on large amusement rides and all in high school with all the other kids. And, and I taught them to see themselves differently. I taught them to realize that their barriers could also be broken. I taught them that if you have a goal you can achieve it if you work at it and if you live life in a positive way. And I think all the other children have that strength to teach each other. The most important thing is the attitude of the society toward children's disabilities. You know, in Africa, children is an investment. And once you see a child is disabled, then the parents and the community feel there's no investment. There's no use to invest on such a child. So because of that, they lose most of their basic human rights to education, of course, alongside other rights, like employment and so on and so forth. 
the country where I come from, majority of disabled people come from very poor families, and unless children are educated, then I don't see much opportunities for them to have better lives in the future. Because when you're poor and you have a disability and you're a girl child, then you really would have to suffer triple discrimination. We need to adopt the culture of, uh, of the inclusion in the whole society, not only in the schools. And, uh, when Mia was born, uh, it was during the war in Lebanon, and uh, it was a very big shock for me and for my husband. But at one point, we decide that Mia is here, and we're going to give her all the chance and all the love she needs. And uh, <laughs> I start my fight the day I decide to send my daughter to school, to put her on an early intervention program, and say now that this helped her a lot, a lot. And Mia w would say something about her, uh, her own experience at, uh, at the school. Thanks, Mommy. People who have the budget needs, well, you should give them the chance and to, and to be accepted for every any place like school, like family, like to have their dreams. To all parents, is, first of all, the one thing is accept your child the way he or she is. As we have been told here, first of all, we should look at the child as this is a child, not a disabled child. One obstacle here we have is a uh, about the parents of these children because they, they they don't know their rights and they should be able to demand it and uh, insist on it officially so they can move uh, the authorities to do something about that, to include their children in the class. Kale. Um, they'd been doing a maths test and one of the blind children had come top and the sighted children were just completely astonished that a blind child could do better than the sighted child and it completely transformed their understanding about disability and their perception of these children. So there's a huge learning and a huge benefit goes on, not just for the children who have a disability, but a huge benefit for the, for the non-disabled children in learning about um, respect and inclusion and, and valuing the difference within, within people. Many children with disabilities, you know, have got a lot of obstacles to getting education. One of them is accessibility. The other problem is transportation. Maybe they live in very remote areas, in villages, the schools are quite far apart, and they don't have the transport facility. So we need to get states into a situation where they know that when they build a public building, uh, they need to ensure that it's accessible uh, and that uh, people with disabilities can use it. Making the doors wide enough for a wheelchair to get through, do it at the time, minuscule. Retrofit afterwards can be very, very expensive. All school buildings should be accessible for all. And this universal design is in fact a very, very important, not only in basic education, but also in higher education. And uh, here in Yuvaskula we have some old buildings, not so accessible, but these new buildings are really functional. We're playing the same team.
Good work. You like football? Inclusion is possible. And uh, we should treat all children as special. And as they grow up, they will care. They will learn how to care for the ones with the special needs and they feel they are part of the society. It's like the headmasters make a personal effort or the school teachers make a personal effort to accept these children uh, to the classes. But it should be not personal efforts, it should be a system. I think that inclusion is a process. And I truly believe that the inclusion it is a process. Y tiene que ver con la construcción de una nueva sociedad y por ende de una nueva forma de educar y de una nueva escuela. That has to do with the building of a new, a total brand new society and a brand new way of teaching and a whole new system. We are working with the Ministry of Education to give uh, education and training to the public school teachers. specialized, trained, competent teachers for inclusion to work. The second one is the uh, rigid education system. It has to be modified for education for all. Many of our school systems are organized using methods that don't work for inclusive education. Um, if you think of the old traditional class where you have everyone lined up in a row, uh, facing the front, uh, reciting things by rote, doing things at the same time, uh, it's very hard to include a child who has an intellectual disability. They think that they can uh, not able to teach disabled children, but they can do it. It's not more difficult to teach disabled child than normal child, so-called normal child, if there are any normal child anywhere. I think it's a good way to do it is to to blind the teacher for a while, <laughs> put on a, 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 a something on on his or her eyes for one day, and ask the teacher to move about and read the books, and 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 then how to see the world through, through the sight of a blind person. I think that would be great. It, it is very important that you don't um, define inclusion as simply dumping a child with uh, a, a disability into a mainstream classroom without support, without training, without um, resources and so on. But, but there are many, many ways in which it can be done without it costing a huge amount of money. This is our resource room. We make locally available materials most of them are being produced by the children themselves, as you can see now. After they had made them, some of them are again used by the teachers. One of the strategies is, and which has been used in many areas is to, is to engage children within the classroom as a resource to support the teacher. To, instead of to see uh, the child as a problem, uh, creating a problem for other children, for example, you enlist uh, the support of those children as, as, as uh, mentors, as peer educators, as partners to work collaboratively in teams and in groups and in pairs. Trying something new here in teacher education so that all teachers receive uh, some training in a special education. It's not a separate uh, class or, or course, but uh, it's part of the normal, normal training. At the, at the beginning, it was quite difficult because different kind of learners were new for most of the parents, but it has been better now. Should go to the normal school in the neighborhood with their friends. Even the 
teaching is worse or bad teachers than to go somewhere far away with the good teachers and segregate it to their families and to live in a, in a very strange environment with our only disabled children. No, that's, that's not the solution because uh, we have to learn to live in a normal environment, to face the facts, the fact that there are attitudes. We have to face the attitudes and we have to win the attitudes. And we don't win if we are separated only among ourselves. They have to, to be in one place. But not up in T, not up in T mountain. Okay, so I will be using Finnish sign language from now on, and your interpreters will translate your, the questions into your own national sign languages, just to make make this thing clear. Now, inclusion means, in my opinion, to give the children of different ages the possibility of uh, of being of interacted of interact. Uh, in the world, within the society. But first of all, the person, the deaf person must have a language communication ability. If there is no communication, no language acquisition, then inclusion is a failure. And education is a failure too. An education system that does not include this population puts the entire society at a disadvantage. So you need policies which, which set out the principles of the school, that everyone has an equal right to education, everyone has a right not to be hurt, not to be rejected, not to be humiliated, and you work with the children to share and develop policies which everyone owns and which the children develop for themselves about how they respect and treat each other. Education is the key uh, to get out of, of marginalization. We have an opportunity to convert people from tax spenders into taxpayers, and there's no reward larger than this. And if we don't tackle this diversity in the field of education, we won't be able to, to have peace in the world or to, to come to terms with all other conflicts we have in this world. Education truly should be a right for all, and that right is only meaningful if People can go to the school that they want to, regardless of uh, race, religion, gender, ethnic minority, or disability. So hopefully one day, <laughs> every child should be able to access education and feel that we are a united Inclusion begins with education. Please join us in building a world for inclusion. Oh, my dream is to be the UN Secretary General. Elimu mjumwisho haiwezi kupatikana bila kwanza kuona jamii mjumwisho. Utbildning, all utbildning startar med gemenskap. Ashamolia tabda betalim. La educación de verdad comienza con un compromiso con la educación. La inclusión comienza con la educación. La inclusión es comienza a la escuela. Inclusion fängt in der Schule an. Inclusion fängt per so betust. Inclusion empieza con educación. Come 